I want you to go to Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10. I'm going to read verse 1 through verse 14. You don't have to stand for the reading of God's word, but I am going to ask you to get it in your Bibles or get it in your smart device so you can be aware of what the Lord is speaking and saying to you today. Daniel chapter 10, verse 1 through verse 14. When you have it, I want you to say, I have the bread. Well, that was quick, y'all there. Okay. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, I'm reading the NIV, a revelation was given to Daniel, who was called Belteshazzar. Its message was true, and it concerned a great war. The understanding of the message came to him in a vision. At that time, I, Daniel, mourned for three weeks, ate no choice food, no meat or wine touched my lips. I used no lotions at all until the three weeks were over. Uh, King James Version would go and says he didn't anoint himself those three weeks. A little lotion can't be evil. Amen. Verse four. <laughs> on the 24th day of the first month, as I was standing on the bank of the great river Tigris, I looked up and there before me was a man dressed in linen with a belt of fine gold from Euphrates around his waist his body was like topaz his face like lightning his eyes like flaming torches his arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze and his voice like the sound of a what a multitude i daniel was the only one who saw the vision those who were with me did not see it but such terror overwhelmed them that they fled and hid themselves so i was left alone Gazing at this great vision, I had no strength left. My face turned deathly pale and I was helpless. Then I heard him speaking and as I listened to him, I fell into a deep sleep, my face to the ground. A hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. He said, Daniel, you are highly esteemed. I think King James Version says you are highly beloved. Esteemed, beloved, consider carefully the words I'm about to speak to you and stand up. For I have now been sent to you. And when he heard uh, this, uh, when he said this to me, I stood up, but I was still, I was still trembling. Verse 12. Then he continued, do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. And I have come in response to them. But the prince of Persia resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. Now I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future for the vision concerns a time yet to come. I know there was a lot of reading, but that was good reading. I mean, I always say if you can if you can watch Netflix and binge watch all night, you can read a little scripture. Amen. I want to give you one last verse. Daniel chapter 12, verse 13. Come on, flip. You just watching online. If you were dancing with us, you bet not turn off your you bet not go on another Facebook live right now. If you were dancing in and you're singing the songs, stay for the word. Amen. Daniel chapter 12, verse 13. When you have it, shout, I have it. Glory be to God. As for you, go your way till the end. You will rest. And then at the end of the days, you will rise to receive your allotted inheritance. Huh? Okay, I'm going to read it in the New Living Translation. Maybe y'all get it then. As for you, go your way until the end. You will rest. Mm, glory. And then at the end of the days, you will do what? Rise again to receive an inheritance that have been set aside for you. I'm going to preach this because I only got 20 minutes. I'm going to preach this. I want you to look at somebody and tell them it ends well for the believer. I need to hear the sound of all the believers. I said, I need to hear the sound of all the believers. Yeah, war is coming, but it ends well for the believers. Economic downturn is going to happen, but it, it, it ends well. I need to hear the sound of true believers. Uh, 
uh, usually my, my introduction can be very long, so I won't do that today. I want to go very quickly uh, to the text in Daniel chapter 10. Uh, we know that Daniel is one of the individuals that during Babylonian exile, him and some other young uh, Hebrew Jewish young men were taken uh, captive and taken to these other uh, other people groups. They were taken by Babylonians. They were they were then taken over by Assyrians, just different people groups at different times. And now at this timeline, they're under the authority of the Persians. And the, and the scripture lets us know at this time, uh, under the Persian Empire, the Jews are allowed to go back to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple. But as we see, Daniel does not go. Daniel stays, but Daniel stays because Daniel has a seat of influence even in the Persian Empire. I, I, want, I want you to know this and I want to make a, a specific a point here about that. All of us are called and all of us are anointed, but we are not all anointed for the temple. God is anointing us for the empires. I, I told you last Sunday, we're not just called to geography, we're called to demography. There are different dem demographics God has called you. So I met the young lady today and she told me she's a photographer. Well, if you're a believer, uh, photography is not just a career, it has to be an assignment. Because, because when you're looking through the lens, you're not just looking through the lens to capture somebody's image. You're looking at the e lens to see somebody's spirit. You can't be so busy in what you think your career is that you miss your assignment in the middle of it. Oh, uh, yes, I know in the church we may call you a prophet, but Monday through Friday they may call you a school teacher. Y'all not saying none of men here. I know, I know when you get to church Sunday, you call an evangelist, but you may be a realtor from day to day. And let me tell you something, that calling is just as important. God is calling us to the world. And when we said the world, we're talking about the systems of this world. He says, I'm going to give you power to be a witness in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world world the only problem with the church is we want to stay in Jerusalem because we know how we felt in Jerusalem but God did not save you just for you God didn't anoint you just for you I want you to tell two people in your section tell them God anointed you for somebody you got to get out of yourself and find the somebody there's some bodies that God has called you to if your anointing only works in church you're not that anointed if your anointing only works with believers you're not anointed the Bible says that the yoke, oh my God, the yokes of addiction, hallelujah, the yokes of perversion, the yokes will be destroyed because of the anointing. And I know we're getting ready for the election year. And when we get to election time, the church people get divided because we're looking for a savior to go to the White House. I don't need a savior in the White House because I got a savior that's already on the throne. God has anointed us and we're anointed. We're going to shift systems as we go into them systems. We're going to shift realms when we operate in those realms. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, you can't leave just because you're frustrated. You can't leave your assignment just because they don't pay you what you want to pay. Somebody is here for the paycheck, but somebody got a revelation. Oh, God sent me here. I'm here on assignment. And before I let them run me out, God will run them out because I'm here on assignment. I'm the God could open any door for me. I don't know why I'm talking to somebody here. God, I need you to tell somebody, tell them God could open any door for you at any time in any city. But the reason why you're here, people, some of your family members don't understand. Why are you still in Lynchburg? Some of your friends says, why did you choose Liberty University? Why did you choose University of Lynchburg? Let me tell you something. It was not my choice. I didn't choose it. God chose it for me. And Daniel says everybody is going back to Jerusalem but God got me here my God I need you to scream at somebody tell them God got me here it's uncomfortable sometimes but God got me here it feels restrictive sometimes but God got me here I was talking to my father the other day and he said somebody told him says I understand now uh, why your son preaches so aggressive 
He says, both of y'all are, are aggressive. I said, no, go back and tell them we're not, we're not angry. We're just passionate. <laughs> tell somebody, I know how it ends. It's a whole lot of turns. It's a whole lot of crooks. It's, my journey has been crazy with a lot of ups and a lot of downs. I know I didn't already went to the end. I, let me tell you, I've had challenge after challenge and sometimes I'm scratching my head and I'm wondering, did I make the right turn? But the only thing that keeps me sane and the only thing that keeps me pushing is because I know how it ends. You all get away from me, please. Daniel stays, Breela. He, he stays. Uh, and at this time, it's not Daniel that's 15. It's not Daniel that's 16. Daniel at this time is around 84 or 85 years old. This says something to me. That you never graduate from prayer. And that age doesn't expire your anointing. As, as a matter of fact, the anointing should be increased in your life the older you get. Uh, during this time, many of the Jews who had been in exile had returned back to the country to rebuild the temple. But they were facing obstacles. And Daniel has the prophecies of Jeremiah. And these prophecies of Jeremiah declares it. The classic God has a plan and after a period of time they're going to come back and the temple is going to be rebuilt. But Daniel's getting news about how the Jews who have returned are going through challenges after challenges trying to rebuild. And that's why while you're starting this new year and you're making all these new year confessions with your confessions are going to become are going to come obstacles. Things happen when you're building. Tell your neighbor, look for it. Tell them, expect it. Things happen when you say, I'm going back to school. You know? And then all of a sudden, your transmission goes bad in your car. Things happen. Oh, we're so excited. We got another baby coming. I lost my job. Like, that's how, that's how it works. When you start building... And the Bible says, count it all joy. Because this only happens for those who are building. If, if you want everybody to like you, if you want everybody to be your friend, if you want everybody to be your fan, don't do anything. Just stay anonymous. Don't do anything. Don't try anything. Because as long as you're just as flat as they are, they are good with you. But if you ever decide you're going to stand up, you become intimidating. And people who don't know you will come in under your picture. People will create fake profiles just to antagonize you. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, it comes with building. Y'all be seated and I'll hurry up and wrap this up. So Daniel said, I got questions. You sent them back. But obstacles are happening. So do you want them to rebuild or not? <laughs> Have you ever asked that question? Like, is this what God wants me to do? Because I thought this is what God wanted me to do. But now I'm doing it. It looked like there's no help. There's no, let me tell you something. All of us want to shout about favor. I got favor with God. But true favor with God sometimes will make you look like a failure. All right, okay. Y'all want fluffy theology. You want to reign, but you don't want to suffer. You want to be settled, but you don't want to suffer. Let me tell you something. Real favor of God will show you that you're going to be in an elevated place. And the favor of God that he, that he gave you will cause you to end up in a pit put in there by people you've been called to help. Favor sometimes will make you look like a failure. So Daniel said, hold on. You sent them. You said for them to go back. Is this the right time? Because they have been hit on every side. 
Somebody send word down your road, tell your road, your warfare is your sign that you're going in the right direction. So Daniel has questions. What do you do with questions, Daniel? Well, what do you all do when you have questions about your future and your life? Mm. Some of us spend a lot of time going over it with friends, back and forth. And sometimes you don't really want answers. You just want to be heard. Because people can give you an answer or an opinion, right? But that, that don't mean it's going to settle with you, right? What do, what do you do when you have questions? You write Facebook statuses that, that sounds like a cry for help. <laughs> what do you do when you got questions and it seems like things are getting harder than easier? Well, you just need a little something to just take the edge off. But what do you do when you got questions? What do you do when you got questions? I can just. Come on, we all got something that we run to. When your faith go under attack with questions. See, sometimes questions, hallelujah. Qu questions can be a, an, an assault. No, and I'm telling you, when you get left to your questions and you ain't hearing nothing, Oh, y'all don't leave me out here. Why y'all looking at me like this? No, no, for real. Questions will make you like, hold on. That is true. So if God wanted me to do this. I talk to y'all over here. Come on. No, for real, for real, for real. Have you ever had that moment where you were so sure about what God wanted you to do? And then when you stepped out to do it, everything started falling apart. So then them questions when you don't have answers will make you say, hmm. I need you to look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I'm praying for you that you'll survive your season of questions. I'm praying for your faith that when you got questions with no answers, you'll hold on to the last thing you heard God say. I pray that you don't, don't try to escape your valley of questions just because it's uncomfortable for you. I'm praying for your hour of questions. Daniel doesn't go to his friends. He doesn't pick up advice. Daniel starts fasting and praying. And he does it for three weeks. Fasting and praying is the posture of the serious. <laughs> oh, y'all see how we came to that Alton dance today? Now, I know what some of y'all did. Like, I wonder what some of them people real. I don't even wonder about it anymore. Because for me, I, I mean, I care, but... Not as much as I care to make sure I'm sincere. Right. Right. I realize people can fake it. They can fake speaking in tongues. They can, they can fake, oh, I just love Jesus. They can fake all of that. But um, when you get serious, fasting is something that's between you and God. You don't fake that. It's, it's an intentionality. It's an affliction against your own flesh. Glory be to God. So I said, when we do corporate fast, if you if you uh, if you cheat, you're not you're not you're not doing it to us, right? Because you can't get the benefit of something that you cut in corners on. But fasting and praying is the posture of the serious. It's not about proving God. It's about proving you. It's the posture of preparation for what God wants to show you and what God wants to do through you. I need you to tell somebody God wants to show you something. Fasting and praying illuminates your eyes to the realm, uh, to eyes to realms and make you aware of divine visitations. Because let me tell you something. The early church realized and they acknowledged that angels came in the midst of them all the time. All the time. I mean, really, this is why he even told us, um, you know, to test spirits. He says, even if an angel of light come to you and give you any other gospel, let that angel be a curse. That means the early church was accustomed to angelic visitations. Right. The Bible says, be careful 
how you entertain strangers because they may be angels unaware. So they understood that, yeah, angels come in the midst of us to the point Paul was saying, because God sends angels, don't offend them. That's why Paul says the, the culture of honor in the New Testament church in their day was women covering their head. Even in the U.S. in the early 1910s and 20s, a woman, even whether she was saved or not, wouldn't even go to the grocery store without a hat on, right? So he even says, women, cover your heads when you go to worship. Why did he say cover your heads? He said, because of the angels. You see the awareness they had of divine visitations? Now the issue is, are angels still among us? Is it still happening? Are angels still among us beyond our Hallmark cards and beyond you calling your deceased grandmother your guardian angel? Are angels among us? Well, if I look at the biblical text, the answer is yes. He gives angels charge over us. Well, why don't we see them? Why don't we perceive them? My goodness. You know why? We don't see the heavens at night. You know why we don't see the stars at night? It's not because they are not present. It's not because they are not shining. But because of false illumination. Because of this false lighting system. It blinds us from seeing what's real. My God. You call these lights real. This is not real. This is fabrication. This is imitation of the real light. And some of us are so consumed with the light of our cell phones, with the light of, oh my God, that we're missing out on the heavenly hosts. And sometimes you got to fast and pray. You got to shut down your computer. You got to shut down your phone. I'm telling you, when you get serious about God and you want to have a divine experience, when you start fasting and praying, you'll see things you ain't never saw before. Stop telling me what ain't real when you ain't never got serious. Oh! Oh, be to God. Fasting and praying illuminates our eyes to spiritual realms and it makes us aware of divine visitations because the Bible says after fasting and praying for 21 days it's almost like it didn't say he set out to fast 21 days he just got to the 21st day and was like okay okay I'm finished and he went on down by the river with some of his friends some of his colleagues, and all of a sudden, there was a man standing by the river. And the Bible says that the men with him ran in terror, but they didn't see. Why are they running and they didn't see? It tells us that you can feel accurately and proceed poorly. Mm. This is why you can't run with your feelings. You have to be still for understanding. Many of us have ran with what we felt, but we didn't stay still long enough to get an understanding. And you miss vision deals with understanding. Many of us have walked away from God moments because of the way we felt and not because of what we understood. This also shows us that proximity to God's presence. I want you to hear me when I say this. Uh, proximity to God's, I need an echo in the room. Proximity to God's presence. It's not always access to God's power. That's why the same people can be in the same service and get different experiences. The same people can pray in the same circle and get different experiences because just because you're close to the presence don't mean you have access to the power. Who? I'm sorry. Who is the man? Who is the man? It's been under great scholarly debate about who this man is. 
Some lifted up that it was a, uh, a Christophany. A Christophany, a fancy word of saying a manifestation of Jesus Christ before the incarnation. And I say before the incarnation, we mean before Bethlehem, before he was born. Now, those who say that it's because of his description of this man. You know, feet like brass, voice like a many waters, a multi-layered voice. And so some have said, you know, that it could be Jesus before uh, the manger. Others would lift and say, no, it can't be Jesus. But the, the picture of Jesus in the book of Revelation and the picture of this man shows us what angelic creatures and angelic beings look like. What I do know that this man was not a regular man. Why? Because in the presence of this man, the Bible says Daniel falls out. An 84, 85 year old man falls, I mean he falls out. He falls out shaking. He falls out like a dead man. My goodness. It, it's why some of us believe who are part of the Pentecostal charismatic apostolic culture that is scriptures like this that help us maybe be able to understand what we've experienced um, in church services. Because just because you experience something or you do something don't mean it's biblical. Because there's a whole lot of stuff we do in church now. We can't trace it to no scripture. Oh, y'all talk to me in here. But I know what I've experienced and what others experience. And, and we, so we've tried to say, okay, where is it in the Bible where somebody gets slain in the spirit? Or somebody falls out or somebody goes shaking like we've seen in our church services, right? Well, we see a picture of it. I mean, not a video of it, but with descriptive terms. That Daniel is in the presence of something, of something supernatural. And if you read in the King James Version, it says his knees buckled. Yeah. Woo. Yes, now, now, for some of you, you're listening to it and I want you to didact from the text and I want you to have a discussion with yourself and Google some stuff because you know Google is God for some people. <laughs> now, you can go back and forth with it with yourself. Yeah. But one thing about it, you can't talk me out of it. Yes, and I'm not going to try to talk you out of it. But if you ever been in the presence of almighty God, I'm not talking about Bishop so-and-so, Bishop Younger, or Benny Hinn or somebody. I ain't talking about no antics. I'm not talking about nothing conjured up. But if you've ever experienced when heaven invades the realm of the earth, even when an airplane goes up, my God, even when an airplane shifts altitude and goes into another realm, sometimes it will incur turbulence because it just pressed through into another place. And any time you really press into the presence of God, if the feet of Jesus ever steps in the room, I need you to touch three people if it's your testimony. Tell them, I get it, I get it. There were times when the presence of the Lord came in the midst and I started crying and nobody did anything to me. I started running and won't nobody chasing me. I'm not talking about something I learned. It didn't happen because I was Pentecostal. It happened because of presence. I need somebody to open up your mouth and thank God for your experience. Thank you. I pass my time. If you would just give me a few minutes and I'll finish. The, the Bible says, the men ran. Daniel stayed, but he fell out. And the Bible said, the, 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 the angel went over there and said, all right, get up. Now, I know you're having a good experience. And I know all oh, glory, hallelujah, Jesus, Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, I worship Jesus. Now, that's good for a time. But then I got to give you instructions. You know, you know, come on. Good shouting and dancing and rolling in the floor is good. But when I get up out the floor, I need to know something. Y'all not saying it. Come on. All that speaking in tongue is good. It builds up your most holy faith. But at some point, I need an interpretation. I need some strategy. Come on.
come on, I need more than a feeling. I need somebody to talk to me in here. I need more than a touch. I need to tell somebody, I need some answer prayer. I need some instruction. There's a whole lot going on in my life. I don't need church just for a drug. I don't need church for just a hype. I need instructions. I'm dealing with real live stuff. Uh, so he said, get up. Get up. Get up. And he began to speak some things to him. But you know, Aunt Geneva, the first thing he said to Daniel, he says, he said, Daniel, you're beloved of God. Man, I wasn't looking for that. I didn't expect that. I'm sorry. A, an angelic creature standing with bronze feet, linen garments, and a light shining from him, scaring the life out of me. My knees are buckling. I didn't pray for 21 days about incoming wars and challenges. And the first thing I hear, I'm loved by God. And maybe that's the word of the Lord that some of us need to be reminded of. Because to your children, your mommy, to your children, your daddy, and you know what that means? Give me. Feed me. Hallelujah. To the church, your pastor, you elder, and that means serve me. Pray for me. To your job, you are a member. That means serve us, work for us. And we may give you your time off. And then here comes an angel coming down through three different realms with a message. He says, before I go into any detail, Daniel, I got to tell you, you are loved by God. I need you to tell somebody, you're not just used by God. You are loved by God. People will use you. And when they can't use you anymore, they will discard you. But Daniel is an 84-year-old prophet that's still loved by God. Daniel, you can't work like you used to work. Daniel, you can't do like you used to do. But you are still loved by me. Who would serve a God like that? The God of the universe that's holding all the planets and the solar system in place. But he takes the time to say, hey, 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 hey. I know you've been going through something lately. But I want you to know I see you And when you prayed the first time I heard you And I love you I love you Above all of the crazy stuff that's going on in your life You went through a divorce But do not mistake me for your spouse I love you I know you got friends that walked out on you And people you thought you would be friends with For the rest of your life But I am not them I love you I love you And then he started going into little details about some things that's going to happen. He started talking about over a thousand days of tribulation. He started telling them about how the Greek and Persia are going to go into battle. And the Bible said while he was talking, are y'all still here with me? Y'all still? Y'all with me? All right. While he was talking, because when, when you count those 100 and 1,300 and some days, it adds up to, uh, when you add up that whole scan, when you're looking through the scripture, it starts adding up to the seven years of tribulation. So he says, I'm telling you some stuff that's not yet, but it's coming. You can't stop it. And the Bible says, he started to get, he started to get overwhelmed. Wouldn't you? He said, wow, you hear me? Hold on. 2024 is my year. Yes, your year. But there's going to be some wars. And all wars will not be between countries. <laughs> don't, don't we see? Don't we see? When you look at this text in Daniel chapter 10, you're going to find out something. He said, the Lord heard you the first time you prayed. Well, uh, why, what took you so long to get here then? Have you ever wondered 
why it's taking you so long to get the answer. What took you so long to get here? He says, I was held up. I was held up by the prince of Persia. Hold on, the prince of Persia? We know who the king is, but who's the prince? And if you were fighting against the prince, that means this prince was in your realm. An unseen realm. I want to tell you in this room, there's a war that's going on in the unseen realm. People are getting more wicked than they've ever been wicked. Children are being more advanced than they've ever been advanced. Hallelujah. The enemy is polluting the school system. Hallelujah. They're shifting the laws. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 25 says the spirit of the Antichrist will come in and start speaking against the church. Will start speaking against the men of God. Will start, will start speaking against the most high and start changing the laws and start changing the times because this thing is spiritual. Push somebody to tell them it's spiritual. It's not funny. It's spiritual. It's not politics. It's spiritual. There's something else behind the scenes. You call it the Illuminati. You call it all these other stuff. But oh, there are demonic systems that's pulling strings behind. There are people that used to love God. Now their heart is turning wax cold. I need you to tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, stay sober. Stay sober. This is spiritual. Some of your sicknesses are things that a pill cannot fix. Oh my God. Some of the diseases you're dealing with is not something that an MRI can pick up. There are times where there's a spirit of infirmity that will come on your life. My God. Hey, hey. I need you to tell somebody it's spiritual. It's not Democrat against Republican. It's heaven against hell. Oh my God. It ain't Israel against Palestinian. It's, hell. it's God's agenda against the devil's plot. You better get a revelation because we're in a war right now and some of you don't have your weapon we're in a war right now and some of you don't open your bible we're in a war right now and some of you don't pray if you don't learn how to pray you won't stay if you don't learn how to pass you won't last we're in a spiritual war you know why i know we're in a spiritual war because i've been experiencing it daniel 7 and 25 says when this time comes the enemy going to try to wear out the saints. That means things you used to do in your pinky is now taking all your energy. I'm going to tell you when it's spiritual. And I'm going to tell you because some of you don't realize some of them people you call your friends have been sent on assignment by the enemy. I'm telling you. They've been sent on assignment. They've been sent on assignment. And the enemy is using your good intentions. The enemy is using your heart that hasn't been healed. The enemy is playing on your heart that hasn't. You calling it a good heart is a sick heart. The enemy is pulling on the heart that hasn't been healed. And so now you know it's spiritual warfare. Because you on the phone with them for 30 minutes. And all of your energy is being drained my God and now the enemy is fighting you in your marriage and you don't have no strength to fight now the enemy is attacking your finances and you don't have no faith to speak oh come on to speak over your own life I need you to look at your neighbor tell your neighbor it's spiritual what took you so long what took you so long he said well the Lord hurt you the first time but when I was on my way to give you this message he says the prince of Persia another spiritual being held me up so I want to tell y'all when you see things in the movies and I, I, and I really feel like I want to say this about revelation when you see things in the movies like uh, Superman Marvel stuff Avengers and all that and you know we like that stuff right we like it well my question is where did all the ideas come from And I'm telling you, as you watch some movies, you're going to see some biblical themes and spiritual concepts from people who are not even believers. We are breaking down to them the symbolism of their movie and they have no idea because creativity is in the realm of the spirit. 
Because we're all spiritual beings, whether you're saved or not. We all come from God. And so what happens, the Bible says, the angel of the Lord is coming with an answer. And the prince, that means this spirit, this demonic spirit has authority. Because even in the demonic kingdom, there are levels of authority. Because a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. So if the devil's got to have order, what's wrong that you think you can't have order in your house? Because the devil have come in order to attack your house. <laughs> so at some point when you know it's spiritual, you need to say, hold up. It's too much tension in this house. Everybody meet me in the living room. This is why we need men of God in our houses. I'm not talking about somebody who just paid the bills. We need spiritual leaders in our homes. You don't have to know all the scriptures. You don't have to preach like Paul. You ain't got to pray like Daniel. But you got to say, come on, baby, get the kids. Meet me in the living room. Uh, if you don't know what to pray, just pray Jesus. God is looking for somebody to get in the doorway. Somebody to get in the middle and says, I know what I went through as a child. This would not be my children's inheritance. I know what I went through with my father. I'm breaking the back of this demonic curse I watched my parents get divorced and we will not get divorced you're a spiritual leader you need somebody if ain't no man in your house you stand in the man Christ Jesus and you pray and you plead the blood of Jesus oh glory be to God and the Bible says he says that help me up for 21 days But something was happening in the earth that when one angel was held up, Michael got sent for reinforcement. How is it that on the 21st day, Daniel got up and said, oh, okay, fast is over. Fast is over. And the angel landed on the 21st day. That means that's a direct correlation between the, Daniel's praying and the angel's victory. In other words, prayer matters. Don't you ever think, well, I mean, whatever gonna happen, gonna happen anyway. Whatever God gonna do, gonna do anyway. Let me tell you about God. God is a spirit. And God has, God has established boundaries and laws. And in order for some things to happen in your life, although God is sovereign, God will never go against his word. In order for some things to happen in your life, you're going to have to partner with God. In order for God to operate in the earth, God needs a body. My God. In order for God to do something in the earth, he needs a man. My God. To the point even when he, we needed salvation. Hallelujah. God became a man. My Lord. He took on flesh because a spirit ain't got no blood hallelujah so he needed a body that could bleed he was enough man to die and enough God to save I wish I had a Bible church in here and so he says if you want the land healed God says I want the land healed but if you want the land healed if my people oh I need a praying church I need a praying church who are called by my name if they will humble themselves and pray seek my face I'm just gonna preach Bible seek my face turn from their wicked ways then I will hear from heaven I will forgive their sins and I will heal their I will heal their land Daniel said and this is where I end Daniel says oh my God oh God I know you started off with you love me. Now you're telling me about death and wars. And how, how many know that if you watch the news too long, you have anxiety? How many of y'all know if you watch, look at Facebook timeline too long, you'll get overwhelmed because negativity stays in the algorithm longer because it causes more engagement. And so you feel like the whole world is going down and the whole church is burning down and ain't nobody right and ain't nobody good. And so that's why I need a cat video every once in a while. But then you can't read the comments because then somebody said, why they're keeping cats as pets? Cats shouldn't be pets. Cats should be free to roam in the earth like everybody else because they are people too. <laughs> Dan, you got overwhelmed. 
Put the scripture on the screen. Yeah, chapter 12, verse 13. He got, he got overwhelmed. Then the Lord told him, said, hold on, Daniel. Hallelujah. I'm telling you all this is going to happen. It, ain't gonna ha it all ain't going to happen where you're going to see it. Glory be to God. I'm going to fix it where you're going to rest. I want somebody to receive it. That in a, in a world of turmoil, for the believers, you're going to rest. We're not going to work for rest. We're going to work from rest. I'm going to give y'all proof for this because y'all don't think I conjured it up and made it up. No! When did God make man? On what day? On the sixth day. And what did he tell man? He said, I'm making you and I want you to toil this soil. I want you to name everything. I want you to have dominion over the whole garden. And Adam says, okay, I'm ready. I'm going to do I'm going to start fresh in the morning. Then he said, no. Tomorrow is Sabbath. So that means when he started working, he started working from rest. See, this world's Western culture tell us you got to work, 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 and we may give you a few days of vacation. Work, 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 and we give you two days of PTO. No, God says, I'm going to sit you in rest. I'm going to sit on my God. I feel the Holy Ghost. He says, I'm going to settle you. I come to tell somebody in this room, he's about to take the struggle out of your assignment. He's about to take the battle out of your assignment. He's about to fix it. He said, and he said, some of the stuff you ain't going to see, you're going to die. You're going to rest. But I want you to know, after you hear all you're hearing about what's going to happen in this world, when everybody brings up every conspiracy from artificial intelligence to a Mandarin candidate to go to the White House. By the time people finish talking about COVID, one, two, three, four, and five. Whew. When they try to overwhelm you, look at them and tell them, I don't know about all of that. Maybe it will happen. And maybe it won't happen. But I got a promise. And I know how it's going to end for me. It's going to end well for the believer. I don't know who I'll marry or whether I will get married. But what I do know, hallelujah, it's going to end well for me. I may not live in a big house and I may die in the apartment. But what I do know, tell you neighbor, it's going to end well with me. Because one of these days, I'm going to a place where the wicked shall cease from troubling and the weary shall be rest. One of these old days, I'm going to take my sword and put it in the sand of time and study war no more. Grab your neighbor and shout, oh neighbor, oh neighbor, it's going to end well when peace like a river attending my way. When sea and salt billows roll, whatever my lot, whatever my lot, whatever the economy, whatever the doctor's report, you have told me to say, it is well, it is well, it is well with my soul. Get out of your seat and tell somebody, tell them you don't have time to have a nervous breakdown. It's going to end well for you. You're in the middle right now, but I, I know how it ends. Be not dismayed. Whatever be time, God will, God will, God will, God will take care of you. I need you to hook somebody. Tell him he got you. No, he got you. He loves you. You ain't never been here before, but he's eternal. He was here before you got here. He's gone before you. Make the crooked way straight. Exalted every valley. Calls every mountain to be made low. Tell your neighbor. Oh, neighbor. It ends well. It ends well. And because I believe that it ends well, I don't have to wait until the battle is over. I can shout. 
can shout, I can shout, I can shout, I can shout now, shout now, shout now, praise of that. Rumors of wars, kingdom against kingdom, nation against nation. But he said, Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, and I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, ye may be. Also, my future is not here. If this world was all there was, we would be men most miserable. But one of these days, one of these days, one of these days, one of these days, the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with the voice of the archangel. The dead Daniel, dead Elijah. Oh no, he didn't die. But the dead in Christ will rise. shall be blood in the streets and this blood in the street will be up to the horse's brow I know you you've been looking at the timeline of social media and you've seen what happens in Gaza and in Israel and our hearts ache for all of them but it's only a foreshadow I'm not going to get into politics a bit because to me, it ain't politics. I'm trying to see it in the spirit. The Palestinian people who are people, they're humans. They're children. They're women, men, and children. But you have to understand, the Palestinian people are the descendants. They're the descendants of Ishmael. Hagar's baby. And the prophecy said that his descendants will be exceeding in number. But he will be like a wild man. And his hand will be against every man. So I come to tell you, I don't care what side of the argument you're on. And it's okay. But I'm going to tell you what it is spiritually. It's the war between the descendants of Isaac. And the descendants of Ishmael. It's a fulfillment of biblical prophecy. And yes, let's hold hands and say, say peace, peace, peace. Pray for peace. Psalm 122 said, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. For they shall prosper, they love thee. Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. No, pray for peace. But the Bible says, when you finally announce that there's peace... There's going to be <clears throat> sudden destruction. False prophets will just come to your church and raise good offerings and tell you blessings are coming. And they are. And you will live in nice houses and many of you will. And Jeremiah says, God has a plan for you. Plans of peace and not of evil. But if you're going to be integral or use integrity with your prophetic you can't just say Jeremiah 29 and 11 you got to read verse 9 and 10 too some of you going to be carried captive for a long time you're going to go through one of the worst seasons of your life but when you go through it I know the plan yeah so I 
told you to claim good stuff for 2024. Have positive affirmations. But I'm telling you, everything in, in me, the Holy Ghost in me, won't let me tell you that it's going to be it's going to be easy. But what I do want to tell you, that for the believer, put it back on the screen, will you? For the believer, how is it going to end? When I'm looking in your future, in that final chapter, all I see is victory. I need you to tell somebody, just go through what you got to go through. This is not permanent. It's a season. It's not forever. I went way over my time today. Thank you for your patience. The only issue is, I'm telling you what we all have to go through and how it's, how it's going to end. It's going to end well, but I need, I, need to be, I need to be intentional to tell you it's going to end well for the believer. So if it's going to be hard for all of us, if it's going to be hard for all of us, then what is it going to be like if you're not a believer? The Bible says, if the righteous scarcely make it. I mean, if we scarcely make it through the hard seasons of trials and tribulation, where will the, what, is, what are the ungodly, what are they going to do? What, what helps us go through is because we know we got a promise. I'm, I'm going to give you, a, I'm going to dismiss. I'm going to dismiss. But uh, if, if you are an unbeliever today, I didn't ask you whether you ever went to church before. But you don't believe anymore or you've been struggling to the point you haven't been living out your faith. Today I want you to realize there's a man standing at the altar. And it ain't Bishop Younger. There's a man standing at this altar with his hands wide open. I don't know if you can see him and I don't know if you can identify him. But you'll know you'll see him when you see the holes in his hands. I don't know if y'all noticed but the last couple of Sundays the praise team hasn't been singing on the stage. And everybody kind of been moved to the side. It's not good for aesthetics. Because every show, I mean, every church has a platform and it's easier for the cameras. I'm not saying, we, you know, we'll, we'll eventually come back up here. The Lord just told me in December when I was away, he said, clear out the space that when people are supposed to be worshiping, they're not focusing on people and not me. It's not an indictment against the praise team. But sometimes sometime we come in settings like this and we're looking around and we're, 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 miss, we're focused on the messenger and we're missing the message. Get up and listen to me. The messenger said to Daniel. So today, you have a decision to make. If your faith is not in Jesus Christ, it's been in you, it's been in your friends, it's been in your boo, it's been in other things, and your faith is not settled in Jesus Christ. I'm not going to tell you, come on and get saved, come on let us baptize you today, and all your problems are going to go away. That is not what's going to happen. I'm going to say, come and get saved, you're going to suffer, you're going to go through challenges because really the devil hates you now. But then I'm going to tell you, there's an angelic force that's going to fight for you. There's a community that's going to pray for you. And when you go through the hard season, it's going to end well. Hallelujah. It's going to end well with you. You'll go through a manifold heaviness for a time. But, but it, it, it'll end well for you. So today, I didn't give you the message what God said. That there's a man standing here with his hands open. And when I dismiss service and I give you an opportunity to come. And you know God is talking to you. And if you turn your back and go out of this door, you're showing God your back, not me. Because I'll be honest, God don't show me every day. He doesn't. As a matter of fact, one reason why if he is trying to show me a lot of stuff about you, I be, may be missing it. Because the Bible says to real prophets, like Isaiah, when they get in the presence of the Lord, they just says, oh, woe is me. Woe is me because I'm a man of unclean lips I dwell among a people of unclean lips 
So even the prophet, God had to get coal off of the, out the flame and put it on his lips. When y'all see me going for God in this room, the reason why I came off the stage so I could worship, because I'm purified through the worship. Whoo! Every time he comes on me, he's cleansing me afresh and anew. Ain't none of us dead yet. We're all, we're, we're saved and we're being saved. Now, you go, somebody said, I don't believe God going to send anybody to hell. I don't either. I don't. I don't believe that. God is too much of a God of love to send anybody to hell. God is not sending anybody to hell. If anybody go to hell, they got to step over his dead body. If you go to hell, it's because, not because, it's going to be because you ignored his sacrifice and did not accept him. Because my question is, if you had to pay for your sin, would you have enough money? Everybody in here that's saved and redeemed, you ought to lift up your hands and worship him. Let the redeem of the Lord, whoo, let the redeem of the Lord say something. The Bible says man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. I pray that you are blessed by the message today. And if you want to continue to get more inspirational, motivational, and even more gospel messages, I encourage you to follow our YouTube channel or subscribe to our podcast. And today we want to give you an opportunity to partner what we're doing domestically here at our local church and what we're doing all over the world. There are ways to give. And remember, when you sow, that seed may leave your hand, but it'll never leave your life. The Bible declares to us that when we sow, seeds are connected to harvest. Well, I want you to remember that I know what it feels like to cry until you have no more tears left to cry. But after you finish crying, don't stop. Get up and keep going.